The following HVAC Shop Talk video is brought to you by UEI Test Instruments. Their great tools include the new C161 Combustion Analyzer, the DL429B Clamp Multimeter, and the Hub 6 Refrigeration Analyzer. Find out more at ueitest.com. a house I visited a week and a half ago. I did some PM. They said there's a weird noise. And evidently, I may have forgotten to take it out of emergency heat by mistake, but that's not the problem. Just a thing that I may have done. I left it in emergency heat because I was testing the heat strips last, which is a boo-boo, but that's neither here nor there. Lady said she heard a noise coming from the air handler. So we're going to check out and see what exactly that is. See if anything's going on mechanically that's making the noise or it's something else or what. We'll take you guys along for the ride. Fan is supposed to be running. I do not hear it. So we're gonna take off this door and see if the fan is dead or I left a wire off or something. What a coincidence this would be. Non-microfarads. Might be the motor. I took the blower out and spun it around. It actually spun relatively freely. I'm gonna take the, the blue wire. I guess our medium speed was on this relay right here. I'm going to test voltage going to the blower to make sure we have a full voltage. And then I'm gonna switch speeds and just try it one more time. And then we'll uh, condemn the motor. I have our alligator leads hooked up there to the relay. You can see the one on the relay right there. And we do have 240 volts going to the blower. So it does look like the blower is gonna be bad. I'm gonna switch speeds and just try to fire it off one more time. And then we'll officially condemn the motor. You can hear a little bit of... It doesn't sound too bad, but it's definitely not getting going. You can hear it a little bit. If you really listen, you can hear the issue in the bearing. It's hard to hear, though. All right, so I'm going to take this thing with me. So I can just go ahead and take it. I'll probably take it to the shop and take it apart and put it back together. It'll be a little bit easier for me since my blower puller is back there. Make sure I get the size off of this thing. We'll go from there, go into town and get one. As you guys can see, we are back at my shop, but I wanted to show you guys some of the progress on the house. As you can see, we have a foundation. We have our treated lumber running across the top of it. And in a week or two, the house will be here. So there's our foundation. Nice, pretty day out here. Looks so big sitting here, so much bigger than the old house. Got a couple crawl space access doors here in the back. Down here is gonna be the master bath. So there'll be a bunch of plumbing right there. So. I guess we'll be putting the air handler right in here because that's a bedroom and there's a bath over there. So there's one bathroom here and one master bathroom down there. All the other bedrooms around this bathroom. So that'll give us some room. I can probably set the unit heat pump out here, air handler somewhere right in here, drop a couple of returns off the back, run a trunk down, bring some branch ducts off. So that's probably what I'll do. But you never know, once you get into it, it might be totally different. But there's a tentative plan. That's how the house looks right now. And here we are around March 13th, 14th, wherever we're at, I don't remember. But I don't know when this is coming out, but that's a reference. By the time this comes out, the house should be about here or already set. So I have the old squirrel cage blower motor sitting on the back of the truck here. 
got a service tool on there because the service tool is what fits these particular fittings right here. I'll take that off. Sand this shaft. Of course, some of my stuff is missing or just not replaced yet. And again, this is the first blower motor change out I've done since I restarted the business. So here I have some sandpaper, which is a mouse sander pad. And I do have, well, I do have WD-40, but that's not really my preferred. I'll go and see if there's some croil in there, but I think that's probably all that's gonna be. So I'll sand this thing down. We can put a wrench on it like this, turn the shaft, try to free it up. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this part off, sand it down, maybe put some penetrating oil on it and see how easily this thing's gonna come off. I did have to come back to the shop from my puller, as you can see. And it actually does have some sandpaper in with it too. Oh, playing in the head, Zach, well done. So I've had this thing for a long time. This is the Sensible Products, made in Chicago, clean and lubricate motor shop before using puller. That's the plan, bro. So that's what I'm gonna do. And we'll see how easily this thing comes off. It's been here for 20 years. It's a good sign when it slides down right off the bat. That means I'll probably have an okay time getting it off. In fact, once I clean it up, it may just slide off. Hell, it may slide off without me cleaning it up, but I'm gonna go ahead and sand it up a little bit, get some of that rust off, and we'll see if we can't just pick it up, let it pull out. I'll go ahead and get those screws off the bottom so it can plop out dramatically. Right, the screws are out so maybe maybe it'll just fall out maybe not it slides up but doesn't quite come off so i'm going to sand this down put some lubricant on here and then we'll try it quick like that uh, hammer puller that was out a few years ago that i don't see anymore we're going to hammer it manually with our arms all right we have the shaft sanded a little bit have lubricant put on the shaft which is a wd-40 and let's see what happens. I don't know if I can do this one hand. There she goes. So a little bit of preparation, a 20 year old motor plops right out. We'll go ahead and take that band off of it, get the new motor out and get it in. Uh, oh, 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 oh. So I took the screw out up here and the one on the bottom and this kind of lifts out a little bit and get the wheel out. And although it doesn't look beautiful, I cleaned a lot of that crap out, which you can see right over here. There's a lot of it right there and there's more where that came from. So make it a lot cleaner, get a little bit more CFM and a little bit more balanced. All right, we have our new not Chinese looking motor in. And it has evidently, there's a reversing lead to change the direction of the motor. Got our nice redundant ground. I'll just screw it somewhere as if it means something. And have our brown wires, which are the capacitor, our five microfarad, which will be mounted out here. And we have L2 or L1, however you want to think of it. And then all the other ones are speeds, these three. So, of course, red is low, blue, medium and black is high. So I'm going to screw it in here, here, and here with our screws. And then we can go ahead and secure the blower wheel through the bottom. So once we put the set screw right there on the shaft, you can see where the shaft is flat, where the set screw hits. Also making sure that we have pretty much equal distance on both sides of this wheel. So we are nice and even. We don't become unbalanced, make any noise, and then always test and make sure that it's actually looking healthy. Nice free spinning motor. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the capacitor on the outside. We can pack up, head back over to the job.
wires here. Got to slide it back there. Then I should wire it up. And after I wire it up and it has power, it should go. Let's test the theory. As you can see, we have four wires right here. Like I was saying before, red, low speed typically, blue's medium, black's high, and white's your other line of power. So we're gonna stuff them through this area right here. You can see it has rounded edges, so it won't eat into the wire. And then the speed will go into this relay right over here where you can't see it. And then back towards the back, there's a transformer and the white's gonna go on the 240 volt side on the opposite of the speed as far as L1, L2. So, so I'm gonna get these wired up and then we can actually start this thing up. It's already screwed into place, easy peasy, and hopefully she works just fine. Yep guys, this transformer and this carrier unit uses these smaller stake ons on the left and I typically use the ones on the right as a piggyback, but whatever. So I had to get one of my smaller ones out, which is a red. So it's good to have a few of these around because that has to go on the piggyback terminal here that goes onto the transformer. So just a little tip, make sure you have some of the smaller stake on so that you're prepared for, you know, the 5% of the time, 10% of the time you might need them. Our wiring is complete. What I did was I kinda tidied it up a little bit. The unused speeds are right here. I'm using medium speed right now. You can't really see it, it's kinda hard to see. But at the very back, transformer you can see back there and I actually had to bring the wiring out of that the piggyback terminal broke on that small stake on so I just put a stake on an extra piece of wire ran it out and wire nutted it to the other other line right there so I have a set in medium I'm gonna block off the door right here we're gonna check amperage maximum amperage on this motor is 2.46 amps I think so we're gonna measure amperage while we check it out and make sure we're squared away there PSC motor. The cooling is definitely on. We have 60 degrees coming out and judging from the return, we'll have to see what kind of split we have. But we're right at 60 right now. Been running probably for three, four minutes. You see we're falling down to the 50s. Well, one thing that I'm concerned about, and I'm glad the call went well, the blower's up and running. We measured the CFM at 876. And from what I could tell outside, that unit looks like a two ton. I can't make out much of the model number, but I do make out a 2.4, and I'm seeing that that is likely a two ton, which puts our CFM slightly above 400 CFM per ton, which is a tad high, but I just, in my gut, I don't feel like that measurement is quite right. So I'm gonna continue to do research on using Testo 410 and vein anemometers in general. I'm using 100% of the area of the grill as I was instructed to by I think Mr. Bill Spoon. So I'm gonna continue doing that until I can figure out otherwise. It may just be we're actually getting that much. We have a 14 inch round flex duct, which is a little bit short as far as static would be, but it's an aftermarket motor, so it might be doing better than the original motor. Hard to say. I'm gonna continue to measure and try to formulate a pattern of what I think is going on, whether it's just right on the money or it's too high, too low, whatever 
and maybe I'll try a little bit at my house too, try to add up the grills because there's three different grills. So that's my biggest concern, but the blower's working great. The system's working fine now. It's cooling off up there. It was 79, set it on 75. So everything else seems to be doing okay. And I'm gonna be heading back there soon to do some more cleanup on the other system. Of course, I was able to clean up the blower wheel on this one this time around, which was nice. So got a little bit of that work done. We have some more work to do next time.